For many years, Madison Bumgarner was at the top of baseball when the conversation of the game's greatest starting pitchers was brought up. Clayton Kershaw quickly cemented himself as the best, but Mad Bum was also really, really good. There was a point where he threw over 200 innings in six straight seasons, he struck out plenty of hitters, and also played a massive part in each of his team's World Series championships. Without Madison, the Giants might not have any championship trophies lying around right now, especially at least one of them. Clayton Kershaw is a guy who's never had a bad season, seriously. His worst year ever was 2008, his rookie year, where he put up a 4.26 ERA in just over 100 innings. Since then, his ERA has only been above 3 twice. In his 14 plus year career so far, he's had an ERA under 3 in 11 of them, a sub 2 ERA twice, is an 8 time All Star, 3 time Cy Young Award winner, an MVP Award winner, and the list just goes on and on to further prove that he will be a Hall of Famer one day. He's never really had any bumps in the road, and the only ones he's kinda had were due to injuries, not struggles on the mound. Bumgarner is a little different. He was awesome to begin his career. He didn't really show any signs of slowing down, but that is until he did, and it legitimately looked like it was over for him. He seemed washed up, but things have since gone down to show that that may not be the case. In 2009, at the age of just 19 years old, Madison Mumgarner made his Major League debut. He only threw 10 innings, but did so to the tune of a 1.80 ERA with 10 strikeouts. 2010 then rolled around, and Mad Bum's career officially began. He made 18 starts through 111 innings with a 3 ERA, striking out 86 and contributing to the first championship in San Francisco Giants history. In the appearances he made during the postseason run, he was solid, but Game 4 of the World Series in Texas was where Madison made his biggest mark, throwing 8 shutout innings while striking out 6. 2011 was the start of that 200 inning run, the 6 consecutive years of at least 200 innings pitched from Bumgarner, and the highest his ERA would be during those seasons would be 20. 2012, and it was 3.37. That was the highest. 2011 was a great year for Bumgarner, finishing 11th in the Cy Young voting, followed by another championship season in 2012. After a solid regular season, he did struggle during the NLDS and NLCS that October, but delivered on the biggest stage once again, throwing a 7-inning masterpiece in Game 2 of the World Series, allowing only 2 hits, 0 runs, while punching out 8. Bumgarner became an All-Star in 2013, and continued to be one for the next three years, including 2014, arguably the best season of his career. The 2014 Giants were a solid team, nothing necessarily crazy on paper, just solid all around. On a World Series championship team, everyone has to play their part in order for it to happen, whether big or small. You take one guy away, and there's a decent chance that team doesn't win it all. There's one man on that 2014 Giants team, however, where if you took him off, San Francisco wouldn't have had a shot, and that one one man is Madison Bumgarner. Bumgarner, per usual, had a great regular season. A 2.98 ERA, 217 innings pitched, was named an All-Star, 4th in the Cy Young voting, and all of that is awesome, but it's what happened that October that everyone remembers. It started in the National League wildcard game in Pittsburgh against a really good Pirates team. Bumgarner got the nod and threw a complete game shutout with 10 strikeouts. Onto the NLDS we go. Up next we got the Washington Nationals in Game 3 of the NLDS from Bumgarner, who'd go 7 innings allowing 2 earned runs. Bumgarner got the loss despite pitching well, but the team did go on to win the next game, clinching the series and moving on. Onto the NLCS we go. In Game 1 of that series, Madison Bumgarner threw 7 and 2 thirds innings giving up 0 runs while striking out 7. Four games later, Mad Bum would go eight innings, and despite giving up two home runs, he held the damage to just three runs while the Giants walked it off to win the pennant. On to the World Series we go. In Game 1 of the World Series against the Kansas City Royals, Bumgarner threw seven innings, giving up one run while striking out five, getting the win. He would never give up a run the rest of the series. With the series tied at two games apiece for Game 5 in San Francisco, Bumgarner went out there and threw another complete game shutout limiting the Royals to just 4 hits, striking out 8, and pushing the Giants to just 1 win away from the promised land. And in order to get there, they had to win one more in Kansas City. 
Game 6 was bad, to say the very least, as the Giants lost 10 to nothing to force a Game 7 to be played. Game 7 started out better, with the Giants jumping out to an early 2-0 lead in the second inning before the Royals tied it soon thereafter in the same inning. A Michael Morris bloop single into right in the top of the 4th would put the Giants back out in front, followed by a scoreless bottom of the 4th by Jeremy Affelt. When it's a decisive game with anything, you put all of your cards on the table to win because there's no tomorrow. You either move on or you're done. When it's Game 7 of the World Series, however, it's that same idea taken to the max. You do everything you possibly can to win that game that night in particular, even if it means something like bringing a guy out in short rest. And that's exactly what Giants manager Bruce Bochy did. Not only was Madison Bumgarner on short rest, having pitched just three days prior in Game 5, but he was most definitely taxed as well. Leading into Game 7, Madison Bumgarner had thrown 47 and two-thirds innings that postseason, and 265 innings for the entire year. But with desperate times come desperate measures, and when there are guaranteed no more games after this one, you put your best card on the table, and in this case, that was Madison Bumgarner. So in came Mad Bum in the bottom of the fifth inning, and what followed was one of the greatest postseason performances in history to cap off one of if not the greatest postseasons by a pitcher ever. He'd go five scoreless innings, strike out four, and strand the tying run at third base in the ninth inning for dramatic effect, giving the Giants their third World Series championship in the span of five years. It was incredible, and immediately put Baumgartner into the conversation the best postseason pitcher ever, and he didn't skip a beat. That legendary year from Baumgartner was preceded by a really great 2015 and 2016 seasons, with more postseason success being made in 2016. In the 2016 wildcard game, Madison Baumgartner went the distance, this time in Queens, throwing a complete game shutout to beat the Mets and move the Giants on to the NLDS. Unfortunately, the Giants wouldn't go as far this time, losing in four games to the eventual World Series championship Chicago Cubs. He's yet to go to the postseason with the team since, but for the way it stands right now, Madison Bumgarner has a 2.11 ERA and 102 and a third inning stellar. Although they were solid seasons when he pitched, 2017 and 18 were plagued with injuries, but by 2019, he was back to being a horse. Pitching over 200 innings and although his ERA was a little higher than usual at 3.9, he was still a really valuable pitcher, and that value earned him a 5-year, $85 million contract. Except it wasn't with the Giants, but with the Diamondbacks. A little weird, yeah, but Giants fans will forever love him. As far as Diamondbacks fans though, they probably didn't like Bumgarner very much, at least at first, because he was not good. In 2020, his first year with his new team, he pitched to a 6.48 ERA, with it getting to the point where his velocity was touching 87 at its max, getting put on the injured list in August for the rest of the year. 2021 was better, but still bad as Madison threw 146 in the third innings with a 4.67 ERA. By this point, I hate to say it, but it kind of seemed over. Bumgarner's stuff had seemed to fade, he was giving up a ton of home runs, and he seemed like a washed up pitcher. Great career, but it's over. Okay, maybe a slight overreaction, but with the way he was pitching, it certainly seemed like this was the case, and it was hard to see him going back to his vintage form. Bumgarner is one of those guys we just assume is on his way out soon, by retirement, I mean. But in reality, he's only 32 years old, believe it or not. He still has several years left in the tank if all goes according to plan. And with the way 2022 has started out, there may have been a light at the end of the tunnel for Mad Bum's struggles after all. In over 30 innings to start the 2022 season in the third year of his Diamondbacks contract, Madison Bumgarner has a sub-2 ERA. He's been very good. Will he keep it up? Only time will tell, but he's certainly capable of it. Regardless, Madison Bumgarner is a man who had a really, really good prime, was a ton of fun to watch, and is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, big game pitchers to ever touch a big league mound. But at the same time, like I just mentioned, he's only 32 years old. Bumgarner also loves to hit, and that's because he's good at it. No, literally, he is, for a pitcher at least. He's no Shohei Otani, but Mad Bum has connected for 19 homers in his career, with the last two coming in 2019. Unfortunately, that Mad Bum probably won't ever make a return, as MLB went to the Universal DH starting this season. But as far as the pitching goes, with the way he started out in 2022, the Mad Bum we all know and love on the mound may not be done after all. Let me know if you think Madison Bumgarner is back, and thank you for watching.